could have one phase cut, you could hear a fuse blow, but that wire would still be hot because the coils in the transformer are re-energizing the wire and back feed. So even though you see a fuse open, that doesn't mean the lines are dead. You can still have back feed on. And explain to us, Steve, what the customer would see on that side. Yeah, they would see partial lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of these commercial motors, like your air handling and stuff, motor, you'll they'll start seeing anything that's three phase, you'll start seeing motors and ballast and stuff running up. And that's their choice if they put protection on them or not. Yeah. Well, in this case, they didn't. Well, not a lot of cases, that was their choice. Yeah. So. Yeah. How common is it in storm conditions that you find that your power lines energize other cables or other telephone cables and stuff like that? How common is that? Uh, during a major event, it's very common. So would it be wise to assume that when we turn up the telephone cables on the ground that they could be energized? Yes, that's the best assumption. In fact, we have a rule that our guys won't get on any what we call foreign conductor because other than ours where there's uh, cable TV or telephone or something like that, we won't get on without rubber gloves and sleeves. Okay. Because we assume we assume because it's up an energized pole. We talked about that earlier. Just you may have a down telephone line here yeah. and you look up and all of our lines are look like they're in good shape. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that a mile down the road or half a mile down the road that one of our power lines couldn't be down and get into that telephone. Good that was my rule if I'm always assume that Whatever table it is, it could be any giant further up the road, right? You're exactly right. Yeah, and, and if it's high in peaks on those lines, they will stay energized and won't operate our protective devices. It'll just, our, our system will see it as low and keep pumping juice into it. So, so you sort of answered this question before, but uh, you know, my understanding is just a house current. So I think of the hot wire, and if the hot wire is laying on the ground, it trips, it's trips, And so. Sure. But apparently you, that's not a, I, I understand about how um, philosophically that's not a good rule of thought, but it's possible for an energized line to be laying on the ground and something's not tripped something. Well, it's kind of like Steve just said with the telephone. If it's not a good ground, our system is going to see it as load. And, and depending on how close you are to a, a substation, the more, uh, change, the more potential you have of current that, in, in that way. Snow, yeah, it's all lines yeah. will lay in snow and you cannot right. tell they're hot. It's they're hot as a fire. Mm -hmm. A dry day, laying on pavement like this, they'll lay there hot, they won't arc. Now, if it's a little moisture, you'll see them flopping around and arcing, and hopefully our stuff is coordinated right where it will blow. And we've worked on our coordination system to get our fuses to blow quicker. But man made it, and you can't see electricity can't see where it's going. You know, what? I've spent three hours before looking at a line that's just a quarter of a mile long, and then finally I say, oh, I've looked at that thing 10 times, and I finally see a little split in the wire like that. That's why the wire's out. So, I mean, it, you can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it. I've, I've gone up and scoped wire on the ground, and it's just hot as a fire track sitting there. You have to be careful. Don't assume. A lot of times when a pole breaks, people say the pole broke and the wire's this high off the ground. Well, if it's this high off the ground, it had to hit earth. It had knocked it out. There's no reason for it to be uh, going to ground. We, going we to had ground. in Ashland, we had a cross arm broke, the wire fell, a guy on a motorcycle rode by and said, what's that? Grabbed it, the tires blew out on his motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So killed a 16 year old kid. Yeah, uh, what sort of distances do you recommend power companies for us emergency services going near cable? Ten, ten feet. Ten feet. Ten feet minimum walking up to cable? Minimum. Because we have our own policies obviously and we get to certain things. But, so live cable for, for for distribution, for transmission it's further. Yeah. Ten feet. Uh -huh. ten, ten, ten feet. That's ten correct. Feet. It, well, that varies too. Um, it depends on the size of the transfer. Uh, I can show you. Yeah, it says on the how many gallons is on the nameplate. 
You know what I'm saying? That's, that's one of the smallest ones we've got right there. Are you ready to run? I don't have my glasses. <laughs> it's probably not much. Let's see. It's probably 10 gallons. Now, Dominion Power has their own hazmat crew to handle those. We have a contractor right. that cleans up any oil spills. And, and now it's just mineral oil. Yeah, it's mineral oil. Before we had PCB, but now it's just plain mineral oil. Any other questions? Hey, you used to sell some devices. I assume they still do. I don't think there's any in this area that are um, uh, like indicators that you can use to tell if you're going to have a problem. It's basically like a little stick that you're supposed to be able to walk up and kind of point to a line. It's supposed to tell you. Do you guys have any it's knowledge that those are reliable enough to actually use? Or? Well, there's a. I'll, the thing I would I would caution you on with that, yeah, they do have some devices. There's one thing called a V-Watch that you can actually carry on your body or clip like to your shirt pocket or something. Um, the thing there is, I, I wouldn't want it to give you a false sense of security because, like we talked, about, any kind of mechanical device like that can fail. We have ways to test our stuff. We test our stuff to make sure it's working properly before we before we test it to check if the wires energized or not. But yeah, there are some devices out there. One in particular that we for we've tried out for our some of our patrols it's called a B watch and it's a little thing you can put on your arm and it will be if it's working properly but I wouldn't want I wouldn't well, that, we tell it's, them a, it's to an stay, additional tool yeah, we tell them to stay 30 feet from our line yeah. at all times so. I mean that, that's that's kind of an additional layer of protection I guess to, to kind of tell you that something's energized but I sure wouldn't count on that because that thing's not going off door to touch and, and a wire can be laying there dead for two weeks during a major event. And then somebody goes to the hardware store, starts a generator, and now it's hot. And the little county I lived in during Isabel, I had Cumberland County. And I had five, I knew, I know everybody in the county, had five people back feet on our line just in that little county. So, and one of them, he started it, he called me, he said, my generator burned out. And I couldn't get there for another three days. And I got there and he was trying to heat up about 10 miles a line. So that's why his generator, he was trying to heat up a couple hundred customers. <laughs> and uh, his little generator wouldn't handle it. Yeah, that's why we did that demonstration. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll back the way that transformer works, it's just a steel core with uh, copper windings in there. And that thing will work either way. It'll, it'll work where it reduces the voltage from our, our distribution lines into what you use in your house, which is usually 120, 240 volts in your house. It'll work the opposite way, and y'all saw that with the generator. It doesn't know any difference. In fact, our whole demonstration is done with back So the guy on the motorcycle, it arced from the rim to the ground, that's what happened then? That's why the tires blew up. The, yeah. there's, there's tire, remember the hot dog? There's yeah. tires with a pad to ground. Yeah. We had, that, that, was, that voltage was a lot higher. We had thirty four thousand five hundred steel belt, I guess, you know, in some sense the tire is a steel belt. We had an individual a month or so ago that fell out of a cherry picker truck and landed on the ground and he was still in contact with the buck. What's the possibility that electricity and the truck was leaned over on the power line. What's the possibility that on the power line? Yeah, when, when the truck came over, it was an Ashland truck, when he came over, oh, he caught the line and brought it down. What's the likelihood that electricity would have been transferred down to that? I would make, I would, I would call on to make sure well, it's safe. I mean, it, in that condition, yeah. Aspen has fiberglass booms. Right. Uh, you never know what but it doesn't, you don't know how dirty it is. Yeah. But only uh, us and the tree yeah. trimmers have fiberglass booms. Everybody else, a crane, a telephone company, cable TV, they don't test their booms the way we do. Neither does, neither does Aspen, they don't test their booms. We've had dump trucks come by with their load up and hit our wire, and the guy steps out the truck and gets killed. As soon as he steps off the truck, he, he gets killed. So, I mean, if it's in our wires, and you step off, you're the path to earth. You're gonna get electrocuted. In Fluvanna County, probably 20 years ago, uh, 
A lady hit a car. This is on Central Virginia Electric Co-op. Lady hit a pole. The wire fell on the car. A state trooper saw her there before airbags. Went to reach and get her, and three fingers were blown off of her from touching the car. Just like the hot dog demonstration. I mean, it, it's, it's just that, that has, it, it's as close to real life as you can get. I mean, it's the we can do demonstration in real life. Sometimes what I, concern for me is if we're on, say, brush fires, up storms, whatever, and particularly sometimes it's at night, it's not the lines that you can see, it's the lines you can't see. Um, you know, you're focused in on doing this job, and you don't realize that the lines drop somewhere in, in the trees and whatever beside you. And that's why I'm kind of asking about the, the proximity type thing. I don't know if that's a sure thing, but at least maybe give you a little bit of warning. Have you ever taken a, a pebble and thrown it in a pond and you see what happens to the water? Mm -hmm. All right. There's a thing called step potential. What it is, wherever our wires are on the ground, if you go out a couple of feet, that's the highest potential. <laughs> then it steps down a little bit out to earth, then it steps down again in, in gradient rings. And what happens if you're walking and you have your feet far apart and you're in two different gradients, the power can come in one and go out the other and kill you. That difference of potential. So we recommend a third. <laughs> that's, that's what we do. Keep your feet together high. high. Yeah. That's pretty funny high. We, we tell everybody stay at least 30 feet from any down power line because of step potential. And you got to figure, y'all are out there putting water on it. So you're helping that gradient. You're making it better. So we recommend now, what, at least is, 30 feet. Can that also be the case, like, through walls of a house? You know, if we're inside dealing with a house fire, can you get that, that same step down? You, you will to a certain extent, but most of the stuff, uh, gypsum and stuff, it's almost an insulator. Some of the cardboard on the outside is, you know, bricks will insulate some. You still have a little bit, but you won't have a lot. If you're dealing with secondary voltage, yeah. don't worry about it. Say, Primary voltage, you worry about it. You know, because our voltages range on primary from 4,000 to 34,500. Pretty high voltage. Seventy percent of our system is thirty-four thousand five hundred. Real high voltage. Face to face. Face to face. Yeah. When you see electric poles with multiple electric lines on it, obviously the higher, smaller ones have more voltage to it. Is that that typical three or four thousand range or on our distribution? Side? Yeah, like twenty-nine. That's all thirty-four five. Right there yeah, on our distribution. Where was, well, right out here. It's all 34,000. But we also have transmission voltage up to 500,000 volts. Like on the steel towers you see. How about identification of poles and transformers? What do you need from us as far as information? That's a great question. When you go out, you should see like two different numbers. You'll see uh, uh, like an NO613, that's our grid address. And then the numbers that's supposed to be underneath of that, you'll see, uh, you know, like PA. One, two. That's the grid addresses on the top, the pole numbers on the bottom. And if it's a device, um, like one of these transformers, it's, it's going to have a grid address, that'll put us right on it. We actually have in our car, in most of our trucks now, we have uh, GPS with our devices located in it. So if we get a device number that like that, we can go right to it. So that's, that, yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. That's, that's what we would need from you. What if we're on a house fire and you have, like, my volunteer company, they'll still pull the meat. They're not supposed to, but they'll do it. So we're in there fighting fire. What's the likelihood of having charge still in that house? Well, we recommend that you don't pull the meter. Right. Of course. And let us come out and pull the meter. Keep on saying. We've had instances where we've had primary get into the house, into the secondaries and go into houses, you know, during ice storms. Thunderstorms. I guess I had that in a vehicle accident, actually, where the pole came over, the primary got onto the service drop going to the house. What the house you just saw on that meter base right there, within one eighth of a second, you can generate up to 6,000 amps of bulk current. We're starting to use these new Lexan plastic covers. The old 
uh, glass ones would blow up and shatter and, and glass would get all over you. But, uh, you know, 6,000 amps, nobody's, I don't think any of y'all fast enough for a eighth of a second. I'm not. Uh, I mean, when you pull it,